there was a moment over this summer, and I did wonder about this. It felt like everybody was all in on the Raiders. ESPN spent the entire week talking about the Raiders. Oh, the Raiders, they got Devontae Adams, they got Chandler Jones, got a new coach, the offensive-minded Josh McDaniels. Here they go. You know, even though they're in maybe the toughest division, everybody seemed to be all in on the Raiders. Well, they're 0-3 now. Only six teams in modern history have made the postseason after starting 0-3. Derek Carr has not looked good, and you start to wonder, with the talented rosters in the AFC, I mean, the Chiefs are still good. The Chargers are still good. Josh Allen, the Bills. You know, those three teams lost, but they're still in better shape than the Raiders. And the Raiders roster, no doubt talented. And yes, with 17 games, there's still time. But playoff history is not on your side. And the Raiders right now on the outside looking in. And you start to figure out, okay, after two weeks, that's when we used to assess a team's maybe a long-term potential with the season. Now it's after three or four weeks that you do it. And there are some teams you just don't have a handle on. Like the Colts are 1-1-1, one, one, and one, but they beat the Chiefs. The Dolphins, everybody's all in on the Dolphins, right? Panthers, they feel like they're average. Jaguars. You got a handle on the Jags right now? They're a good team. Now, I don't know if... That's why I said they could win that division because it just seems like it's subpar with the Colts and the Titans. But the Jags have a couple of really good defensive players. You've got an offensive-minded head coach in Doug Peterson. And Trevor Lawrence has played well. To go out to L.A. and beat the Chargers the way they did, that should get your attention. Granted, Justin Herbert, not 100%. Joey Bosa was hurt, left that game. But still, that's impressive. If you look at all the wins this weekend, if I would have said the Jags are going to blow out the Chargers, and they're going to go on the road to do it, that probably would have been the most surprising part of this. Uh, the Titans with the win. Uh, the Bears, I don't know if they're good or not. They're not good. They're not good. I'll, okay. I'll settle that Thank for you. Thank you, Paulie. Uh, the Falcons. Falcons got two really good playmakers. Drake London, Kyle Pitts can play. And it feels like they're going to be set up, not this year, but next year, maybe the year after that, where they're going to be, I think, a very, very interesting team. Um, but those are some of the things the Eagles love the Eagles love the offensive and defensive line. I think it's the most balanced and probably the best offense and defensive line on any team in football. And because of that protection for Jalen hurts and you get after the quarterback and the Eagles are a very good team. Packers get by the Buccaneers. I'm not sure about either one of these teams right now, but if I look at the Buccaneers, they're going to get players back. Packers aren't getting players back. What you see is what you get. And I thought they were going to be a running team and, and rely on that defense. And, and maybe that's who they're going to be, even though you have Aaron Rodgers. But the Buccaneers, they had a chance. They had turnovers, uh, clock uh, mismanagement there, and it's on Tom Brady because he barely got the playoff that they scored the touchdown and that he didn't get the playoff that would have tied the game because Fournette would have scored. And then that's on Tom. But uh, Cowboys and Giants, what if the Giants win? Yeah, Mar. Hey, like we do win or lose, we celebrate? Yeah. Tonight, win or lose, we overreact. To the Giants? No matter what. Cowboys win, Giants win, hmm. Cowboys lose, Giants lose, we overreact. Okay. All right. Uh, poll question today, Seton O'Connor. What are we uh, going to go with? Dan, you're perfectly timed as always. Mm. Uh, who would you who? rather be? Would you rather be the Giants at 2-0 and or the Bengals at 1-2? and <laughs> Oh, like long-term? For this season. Oh. Yeah, like right now. If right. you were, It's like a body-switching movie, okay? And you could just jump into one team. I'm going to say I'll stay with the Bengals. At 1-2? and two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's another option for you. Who would you Ooh. rather be, the Chargers at 1-2 and two or the Vikings at 2-1? and one? <laughs> Well, I'm going to say the Chargers because I have them winning the Super Bowl. Who would you rather Ooh. be, the Cardinals at 1-2 and two or the Broncos at 2-1? and one? Do the Broncos feel like they're 0-3 but they're 2-1? and one? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. <laughs> right? Waiting like, for yes. my moment. Right? The, the Broncos feel like they're winless. It's kind of like, wait, what? They're 2-1? and one? How? But they've, they've won two <laughs> games. 
And then last night, you're watching, you're going, what is this? And clueless people would say they could have been three and zero. That Seattle game was seventeen sixteen. They could be undefeated right now, which is insane to think that. How were you last night watching the game? It wasn't great. I was going to have video shot of me. I, I promised you guys soon seeing me like flipping out watching a game. Would my, you have reacted like Ken Dorsey, the offensive coordinator of the Bills? Very close to that. Yeah. I don't want to like break things in my house, but yeah, he totally lost his mind. But my in-laws were over for Rosh Hashanah, and I didn't want to. That was on my best behavior. I didn't want them to see me acting like that. Yes, yeah, Eden. Do we have any video from the time we watched the Super Bowl with Todd? Remember, we were in oh. Los Angeles at the hotel, yeah. and I think Josh Dumel stopped by. <laughs> Didn't he come by? Or somebody stopped by and was like, wow, this is a pretty awesome party you got going. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was so sad. It was just us and a couple of beers, and we had a big screen TV, and we're like, yeah. We, we had a medium screen TV. We, yeah. I remember, right? yeah and, was, and, and Todd eventually sat by himself. Nobody wanted to sit by him. Yeah, I'm pulling. If you remember, it was a little ballroom, like a little room, a side room at this hotel in Marina Del Rey. And Todd came down, he was in his PJs at the whole thing, the horse head, and then he was just rocking back and forth and not really eating. He's very upset. And then at halftime, he just pulled an Irish goodbye and went upstairs. He's like, I got to go focus. I did. I felt like I needed to be alone, and I spent the entire <laughs> second half, as I normally do when we go on the road, just by myself in the hotel room. During the Super Bowl, but we had a better second half because you had left. Because I would hope so. It's not fun to watch a game like that with me. I, I understand how annoying that must be. But every play... You get upset. They'd be like, that's a hold. That's a hold. But I get like that in the middle of the first quarter of like week three. So you can imagine mm. when a Super Bowl or some big playoff game, what happens. Uh, what else do we have, Seton? Uh, here's one. Actually, maybe we'll go with this one to start hour okay. one. More relieved today. Dan Orlowski or Mark Sanchez? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, Dan Orlowski, obviously, Jimmy G uh, ran out of the back of the end. Well, he didn't run out of the back of the end zone. He more stepped out of the back of the end zone. Yeah. And then uh, yesterday you had a butt punt that kind of, it doesn't necessarily rival the butt fumble, but a butt punt is uh, certainly noteworthy. I think Sanchez feels a whole lot better today because Orlovsky's was worse. It, it, it was like he was playing in the Canadian Football League and he thought the end zone was 20 yards. He's just roaming back there. Um, a butt punt, or a, yeah, the, uh, the, you know, that one's worse. Because, you know, if you look at the play, the Patriots blew up that play with Sanchez where he ran into his offensive lineman. It, it wasn't that he did something where he was going to... I think the Patriots forced that, whereas this one was like, all right, my, my blocker's backing up, and I kicked him. In fact, here's Kevin Harlan with the call. This is risky. And it is, oh, my goodness. Blocked indeed. And we just told you he's only had one blocked in 14 years, and that was number two. And look at where it comes in the game. Let's see if we can get a... Oh, it oh, hit, hit the, the personal protector, Sherfield hit his behind. That gives a whole new meaning to kick, and you know what. Okay, Kevin right. Harlan with the call. Well done by Kevin Harlan. Yeah. How Kicked was him from behind, right in the butt. Will this backfire? Okay, all right. Bloop, bloop. Uh, that one to me was more embarrassing than, uh, than what Sanchez did. Orlovsky's was worse than what Jimmy G did. Yes, uh, see. I think it's Vince Wilfork, maybe, uh, on the Sanchez play, who yeah. essentially just picks up the offensive lineman and throws him into Mark Sanchez. Yes. Uh, who <laughs> he who I think it's Wilfork. He doesn't really get enough credit for that. Like Sanchez gets all of the blame, but he doesn't get any credit because that was a unbelievable play. It was. That wasn't on Mark, even though he's always known as, you know, the butt fumble. But but that one where you kick the ball right into your blocker's butt, that one's that one's more embarrassing. Yeah, Paul. The Grappo play is weird though because he steps on the back line and the ref is looking in another direction, so he doesn't immediately blow the whistle. That was gonna be a pick six when they were winning seven five and it actually gave them an out. He didn't throw the pick six. Would you rather step out of the back of the end zone and have that follow you for the next few years? Or just a generic pick six in a in a national televised game. Pick well, six has happened. It's it's going to be played now with Orlovsky. It, it it you know he pulled in Orlovsky. You know it, he's part of the NFL lexicon for uh, for history. Like, <laughs> but that one was worse. You, you know if you watch Orlovsky, he he did not know where he was, and Jared Allen's chasing after him. Going, he's out of the end zone. He's out of the end zone. <laughs> 
And uh, and I don't even think the official got Garoppolo. Uh, yeah, see. I mean, and unfortunately, too, like Jimmy G has other notable accomplishments that you can point All to. He in his career. All, All he does is win. All he does is win. Unfortunately for Dan, that's kind of yes, Orlovsky, the one you go to. Yeah. You know? yeah, you can't run down the great moments of Dan Orlovsky NFL games. Usually you go, hey, most memorable game. Uh, remember when I ran out of the end zone? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Jimmy G at least played in the Super Bowl.